The SA-80 is a British family of 5.56mm small arms. It is a selective fire, gas-operated assault rifle. Elements of his design, in particular the bullpup configuration, come from the earlier M-2 rifle. The first prototypes were trialed in 1976 and production ended in 1994. It is due to remain in service until 2025. The L-85 rifle variant of the SA-80 family has been the standard issue service rifle of the British Armed Forces since 1987, replacing the L-1A-1 variant of the FNFAL. The improved L-85A-2 remains in service today. The remainder of the family comprises the L-86 light support weapon, the short-barreled L-22 carbine and the L-98 cadet rifle. The SA-80 was the last in a long line of British weapons to come from the National Arms Development and Production Facility at Enfield Lock. History, Development The system's history dates back to the late 1940s, when an ambitious program to develop a new cartridge and new class of rifle was launched in the United Kingdom based on combat experience drawn from World War II. Two 7mm prototypes were built in a bullpup configuration, designated the M-1 and M-2. When NATO adopted the 7.62x51 rifle cartridge as the standard caliber for its service rifles, further development of these rifles was discontinued. In 1969, the Enfield factory began work on a brand new family of weapons, chambered in a newly designed British 4.85x49 M intermediate cartridge. While the experimental weapon family was very different from the M-2 in internal design and construction methods, its bullpup configuration with an optical sight was a clear influence on the design of what was to become the SA-80. The system was to be composed of two weapons, an individual rifle, the XL-64E5 rifle and a light support weapon known as the XL-65E4 light machine gun. The sheet metal construction, and the design of the bolt bolt carrier, guide rods, gas system and the weapons disassembly showed strong similarities to the Armalite AR-18 which was manufactured under license from 1975 to 1983 by the Stirling Armaments Company of Dagenham, Essex, and which had been tested by the UK MOD in 1966 and 1969. During the development of the SA-80 a bullpup conversion was made of an AR-18 and a Stoner 63 at Enfield. Technically in the mid-1970s the 4.85x49 M round was seen as superior to the then-existing version of 5.56mm M193 round in use by the US and by other forces. It should be noted that development of small arms munitions have a long and continuous life and it was estimated by the trial specialists from Enfield that this weapon would ultimately be superior in the 4.85mm configuration. For the 4.85mm round, both propellant and projectile were at the beginning of their respective development curves. Also, weight for weight, more rounds of ammunition could be carried by an individual soldier a euro a considerable advantage on the battlefield. It was regarded as probable at the time that the argument for the 5.56mm standard within NATO had more to do with the economics involved. Over the lifetime of a small arms weapon type far more money is spent on the munitions than the weapons themselves. If the 5.56mm supporters had lost the argument in favour of a British 4.85mm round, the economic impact would have been very large and political pressure undoubtedly played a part in the final decision. In 1976, the prototypes were ready to undergo trials. However, after NATO's decision to standardize ammunition among its members, Enfield engineers rechambered the rifles to the American 5.56 X45 MM193 cartridge. The newly redesigned 5.56 mm version of the XL64 E5 became known as the XL70 E3. The left-handed XL68 was also rechambered in 5.56 X45 MM as the XL78. The 5.56 mm light support weapon variant, the XL73 E3, developed from the XL65 E4, was noted for the full-length receiver extension with the bipod under the muzzle now indicative of the type. Further development out of the initial so-called phaser pre-production series led to the XL85 and XL86. 
while the XL85E1 and XL86E1 were ultimately adopted as the L85 and L86 respectively, a number of additional test models were produced. The XL85E2 and XL86E2 were designed to an alternate build standard with 12 components different from E1 variants, including parts of the gas system, bolt, and magazine catch. Three series of variants were created for environmental user trials. XL85E3 and XL86E3 variants were developed with 24 modified parts, most notably a plastic safety plunger. The E4s had 21 modified parts, no modification to the pistol grip, and an aluminium safety plunger, unlike the E3 variants. Lastly, the E5 variants had 9 modified parts in addition to those from the E3-E4 variants. SA80 development was complicated from the start. One complication was at least three project staffing changes at the Royal Small Arms Factory. This resulted in repetition of testing several times. One problem with the design of the gun itself was cases would be ejected at constantly varying angles as it heated up and the rate of fire changed, resulting in a large ejection port. The conversion from 4.85 ohm to 5.56 ohm also caused a complication, as the rate of fire dropped dramatically as the gas port was left in the same position but the pressure and time curve of the rounds were different. The 4.85 ohm round was based on the 5.56 ohm case in anticipation of the need to convert calibers. The barrel was changed easily, but the gas ports had to be enlarged considerably. This was made worse by the production of ammunition with power that gave a lower port pressure and rate of fire. Pressure problems had less of an effect on the LSW due to its longer barrel. Production After receiving feedback from users and incorporating the several design changes requested, including adapting the rifle for use with the heavier Belgian SS109 version of the 5.56 X45M round and improving reliability. The weapon system was accepted into service with the British Army in 1985 as the SA-80. The SA-80 family originally consisted of the L-85A1IW and the L-86A1LSW. The first rifle was issued on October 2, 1985 to Sergeant Gary Gavin, a 26-year-old in the Worcestershire and Sherwood Foresters. The SA-80 family was designed and produced by the Royal Small Arms Factory at Enfield Lock. In 1988 production of the rifle was transferred to the Royal Ordnance's Nottingham Small Arms Facility. In 1994 production was officially completed. More than 350,000 L85A1 rifles and L86A1 light machine guns had been manufactured for the United Kingdom. They are also in use with the Jamaica Defence Force. Design Details Operating Mechanism, with the exception of the L98A1 the SA-80 system is a selective fire gas operator design that uses ignited powder gases bled through a port in the barrel to provide the weapon's automation. The rifle uses a short-stroke gas piston system located above the barrel, which is fed gas through a three-position adjustable gas regulator. The first gas setting is used for normal operation, the second is for use in difficult environmental conditions while the third setting prevents any gas from reaching the piston and is used to launch rifle grenades. The weapon uses a rotating cylindrical bolt that contains seven radially mounted locking splines, an extractor and casing ejector. The bolt's rotation is controlled by a cam stud that slides inside a helical camming guide machined into the bolt carrier. Features The family is built in a bullpup layout, with a Ford-mounted pistol grip. The main advantage of this type of arrangement is the overall compactness of the weapon, which can be achieved without compromising the barrel length, hence the overall length of the L85 rifle is shorter than a carbine, but the barrel length is that of an assault rifle. However, the adoption of this layout also means the rifle must be used exclusively right-handed since the ejection port and cocking handle are on the right side of the receiver, making aimed fire from the left shoulder impossible. This can also give rise to a tactical disadvantage when firing around the left of cover, where the shooter must expose the majority of their body. The SA-80 family is hammer-fired and has a trigger mechanism with a fire control selector that enables semi-automatic fire and fully automatic fire. 
a cross bolt type safety prevents accidental firing and is located above the trigger. The safe setting blocks the movement of the trigger. The L85 rifle features a barrel with a slotted flash suppressor, which also serves as a mounting base for attaching and launching rifle grenades, attaching a blank firing adapter or a bayonet. The weapons are fed from a Stinag magazine, usually with a 30 round capacity. The magazine release button is placed above the magazine housing, on the left side of the receiver. When the last cartridge is fired from the magazine the bolt and bolt carrier assembly lock to the rear. The weapons receiver is made from stamped sheet steel, reinforced with welded and riveted machined steel inserts. Synthetics were also used. A Picatinny railed handguard was also developed for the type. Sights, rifles used by the Royal Marines. British Army Infantry Soldiers and the RAF Regiment are equipped with a SUSAT optical sight, with a fixed 4x magnification and an illuminated aiming pointer powered by a variable tritium light source. Mounted on the SUSAT's one-piece, pressure die-cast aluminium body are a set of backup iron sights that consist of a front blade and small rear aperture. Rifles used with other branches of the armed forces when not on operations are configured with fixed iron sights consisting of a flip rear aperture housed inside the carrying handle and a forward post vertical blade foresight, installed on a bracket above the gas block. The rear sight can be adjusted for windage, and the foresight to euro elevation. In place of the SUSAT a passive night vision CWS scope can be used, and also euro independent of the SUSAT euro a laser pointer. Weapons used by some Royal Marines, infantry. Ministry of Defense Police and other soldiers with a dismounted close combat role in operations in Afghanistan have had the SUSAT replaced with the Trijikan Advanced Combat Optical Gun Sight. In 2011 the Ministry of Defense began issuing ELCAN Spectre OS 4X lightweight day sights in an effort to replace aging SUSAT units across the British Armed Forces, forming the first stage of the FIST Infantry Enhancement Project. In order to mount the new sight, the weapon has been provided with an adapter to convert the existing sight rail to the Picatinny standard, in keeping with the updated handguard. The FIST project has also seen upgrades to the existing Key Optique CWS and Mark C Kite night vision scopes, and the introduction of the FIST thermal sight, following operational experience with the VIPIR2 Plus thermal weapon sight in Afghanistan. All of the new FIST weapon sights have the capacity to accept a 1x red dot close quarter battle sight attachment. Accessories, the L85 is supplied with a sling, blank firing adapter, cleaning kit and a blade type bay in it, which coupled with the sheath can double as a wire cutter. The rifle can be adapted to use .22 long rifle training ammunition with a special conversion kit. The rifle variant also accommodates a 40mm underbarrel grenade launcher such as Heckler and Koch AG36 40mm grenade launcher variants. Variants There are four main variants that make up the SA80 family the L85 IW rifle, the L86 light support weapon, the L22 carbine and the L98 cadet rifle. The family has currently undergone two major models. LXXA1 being the first issue weapons, and the LXXA2 to distinguish weapons which have undergone H and K upgrades. L85 Rifle The L85 Rifle, in its improved A2 version, is the standard individual weapon for the British Armed Forces. On operations the rifle is often fitted with the LLM01 laser light module. The L85A2 can also mount the L123A2 UGL 40mm underbarrel grenade launcher. The addition of the underbarrel grenade launcher adds another 3.30 lb to the L85A2's weight. Magazines issued with the L85A1 were aluminium, and not very robust. There are now three types of magazine issued with the L85A2 the most recent being the plastic Magpul EMAG purchased as an urgent operational requirement, the other two are of steel construction with a stainless steel follower. The main variant is for live ammunition, and the other is exclusively used for blank ammunition. The blank variant is identified by yellow stripes on the magazine, and is designed to prevent the loading of live rounds. As blank rounds are shorter than live rounds, live rounds will not physically fit into the blank magazine. 
blank rounds will fit into the normal magazine, but their slightly shorter length creates problems with jamming. From 2007 an upgrade including the provision of ACOGs, a new handguard incorporating Picatinny rails, and a new Vortex-style flash eliminator is being introduced for use by selected units. L86 LSW The L86A1 LSW is a magazine-fed automatic weapon originally intended to provide fire support at a fire team level. It has a longer barrel than the L85A1 rifle and a bipod, shoulder strap and rear pistol grip, together with a shorter handguard. The extended barrel provides an increased muzzle velocity and further stabilizes the bullet, giving a greater effective range. The weapon is otherwise identical to the L85 version on which it is based, and the same 30RD magazines and sighting systems are used. Like the L85 rifle, it has a rate of fire selector on the left side behind the magazine housing, enabling either single shots or automatic fire. The increased barrel length, bipod and the optical performance of the SUSAT give the weapon excellent accuracy. From its inception, the L86 was a target of criticism on much the same basis as the L85. The LSW has the additional issue of its inability to deliver sustained automatic fire as it does not have a quick change barrel, and is not belt fed. For a time the primary use of the LSW has shifted to that of a marksman's weapon within many infantry sections, capable of providing precision fire at ranges of over 600 am, however it was replaced in this role by the rifle. 7.62 mm L129A1 The role of a light support weapon is instead filled with the L110A1 FN Minimi which is a belt-fed weapon with a quick-change barrel. The L86A1 was upgraded to the L86A2 at the same time as L85A1 rifles were upgraded to L85A2 standards, undergoing the same set of modifications. L22A1 Carbine There have been three attempts at a carbine, the first was in 1989. The second attempt was in 1994, this used the standard L86 LSW handguard and a 17.4-inch barrel. The third attempt is also the only one to officially be adopted, the L22. This resembles the 89 model but has all the necessary A2 upgrades, it has a 318mm barrel and an overall length of 585mm. Around 1,500 were manufactured from surplus L86 LSWs, more were built with the increased demand. Due to the shortened barrel, it is less accurate and less powerful, especially at long ranges. Because there is no handguard, these guns are outfitted with a vertical front grip initially issued to tank and armored vehicle crews for emergency action out of vehicle. The L-22 has been seen in the hands of the Royal Marines Fleet Protection Group and helicopter pilots due to the compact size, L-98 Cadet General Purpose Rifles. The L-98A1 Cadet GP Rifle was a general purpose rifle used by the Combined Cadet Force and Sea, Marine, Army and Air Cadets in the United Kingdom. It was introduced in 1987 replacing the .303 Lee Enfield No. 4 rifles and .303 Bren guns used for weapons training. The L-98A1 rifle began a phase decommission in early 2009 and is now no longer in use. UK cadet forces have now received the updated L-98A2 rifles. The L-98A1 was similar to the L-85A1, but lacked the gas components. It was a manually operated, single-shot rifle, with a cocking handle extension piece mounted on the right side of the weapon, and was cocked with the right hand. It was also fitted with adjustable iron sights. The L-98A1 had a number of design features that caused problems. A stoppage occurred if the cocking handle was not fully retracted and released because the spent round failed to eject cleanly fouling the breech and preventing the loading of the next cartridge. This fault was often caused by poor cleaning as dirt, grit and rain easily foul and remove the oil from the exposed cocking handle slide making the action harder to cycle. The absence of the flash suppressor also prevented the fitting of a blank firing attachment thus increasing the safety distance from 5 a.m. to 50 a.m. A conversion kit existed which enabled the L85A1. L86A1 and L98A1 to fire .22 LR rimfire cartridges instead of the standard 5.56 LR NATO cartridge. 
this was designated the L-41A1. This allowed the weapon to fire live rounds on .22 ranges when full-size military ranges are unavailable. The kit consisted of modified working parts, a special magazine that is the same size and shape as the standard 5.56mm magazine and a breech insert, shaped like a 5.56mm cartridge, which was fitted into the weapon's breech. This adapter contained a smaller breech into which the modified bolt inserts the .22 cartridge. The modified magazine locked into the magazine housing exactly like a normal one would. It allowed .22 rounds to be fired semi-automatically using direct blowback against the bolt to cycle the next round. If the kit was fitted to the L98A1 a standard L85 cocking handle had to be fitted to allow semi-automatic fire. The conversion was not permanent and could be removed from the weapon in the time it took to normally strip and reassemble the weapon. This kit was not compatible with the A2 upgrade and was removed from service, however a quantity have been modified to work in A2 weapons and have been approved for use in the L98A2, this kit has been designated as the L41A2. There was a drill purpose version of the L98A1, known as the L103A1. It was similar to the GP rifle, however, modifications had been made in order to deactivate it, the barrel was sealed by filling it with lead, the firing pin was cut and welded down to the bolt face and the hammer was filed down, making reactivation uneconomical. The weapons were used by cadets for weapons training. The DP could be identified by a white stripe on the hand guard and near the butt of the weapon with the letters DP in the stripe. The bolt carrier assembly was painted red and this can be seen from the breech on the right-hand side of the weapon. The L98A2 GP rifle was introduced in 2009, as a replacement for the L98A1 Cadet GP rifle. Unlike the L98A1 the A2 has the same cocking handle and operation as the L85A2. The L98A2 can be fitted with a safe blank firing system incorporating a blank firing attachment and a blank only magazine. It can be distinguished from the L85A2 by the absence of a selector switch meaning it is locked on semi-automatic fire. The L103A2 Cadet DP rifle is a deactivated L85A1 used by cadets for practicing rifle drill and weapons handling tests. The L103A2 contains similar working and gas parts to the standard live firing weapon but has been extensively modified so it is impossible to convert it back to a functioning firearm. Deployment The SA-80 has been used in all conflicts in which the British Army has been involved since its introduction in the mid-1980s. Deployments include Northern Ireland, the First Gulf War, Bosnia, Kosovo, Sierra Leone, Afghanistan and Iraq. The British went into battle with fixed bayonets on the SA-80 in Iraq, the first time fixed bayonets had been used since the Falklands War. On several occasions, fixed bayonets have been used during the Afghanistan conflict also. Service and modification, soon after being adopted for service, problems began to surface. A Euro the first five years of this rifle service have been disastrous. A number of manufacturing defects showed up in service conditions, and it was not until the closure of the RSAF at Enfield and a setting up of an entirely new production line, with new computer-controlled machine tools, at the new RSAF Nottingham, that the quality of the production weapons began to improve. It will take some time for the poor reputation gained by the initial issue weapons to be overcome. The only consolation is that the same sort of thing has happened to other military rifles in the past, and they have managed to live down their early reputation and prove their innate reliability. It is to be hoped that the L85A1 will do so as well. When the L85A1 and L86A1 were first sent into major combat during the Gulf War, their performances were appalling. The L85A1 proved seriously unreliable in semi-auto mode, and slightly better in full auto, while the L86A1 performed the opposite. Specific complaints included, the poor quality plastic furniture fell apart and the gun was damaged easily. The magazine release catch was easily knocked accidentally and dropped the magazine. The catch on the housing over the gas mechanism was too weak and constantly popped open, so it had to be taped down. Only 26 to 28 rounds could be loaded in a magazine because the springs were weak, 
and it also had to be kept very clean and the lips checked for dents. The LSW had a small magazine capacity for its role and overheated after 120 to 150 rounds fired in bursts. The weapons were difficult to strip and reassemble, with the gas plug easily jamming in place and requiring an armorer to remove. And ergonomic issues related to the safety catch, cocking lever, and the location and stiffness of the fire selector switch. The SA-80 initially gained a poor reputation amongst British soldiers and Royal Marines as being unreliable and fragile, a fact picked up by the UK media, entertainment industry, and members of the House of Lords. The writer and former soldier Andy McNabb said in his book Bravo 2-0, that the British Army procured a Rolls-Royce in the SA-80, albeit a prototype Rolls-Royce. Immediately after the First Gulf War 1990, the UK Ministry of Defence commissioned the Lancet report during Operation Granby, into the effectiveness of the L85A1IW and L86A1 LSW. This report criticised the acceptance of the weapon into service. Neither weapon had managed to pass the sand trials and both frequently jammed. The mechanism of both weapons needed to be well lubricated as the weapon became prone to seizure if fired dry, yet in sandy condition the lubricated weapon became unreliable due to the lubricant attracting sand into the moving parts. The Lancet report identified in excess of 50 faults. Most notably the magazine release catch, which could easily be caught on clothing and therefore accidentally release the magazine. The plastic safety plunger which became brittle in cold climates. Firing pins that were not up to repeated use and prone to fracture, if used in automatic fire mode. Although this report identified over 50 faults, and some of the rifle's problems were corrected as a result. These modifications only addressed seven of these issues and complaints over reliability in service continued. The Ministry of Defense applied various minor fixes to problems in the guns or simply denied that a problem existed. The mod finally began to address issues with the SA-80 family in 1997. At first they considered simply buying M16 rifles or M4 carbines, but procuring entirely new weapons was considered too expensive. As a result, a more extensive modification program was executed. In 2000, Heckler and Koch, at that time owned by the British defence conglomerate BAE Systems, was contracted to upgrade the SA-80 family of weapons. 200,000 SA-80s were remanufactured at a cost of A400 pounds each, producing the A2 variant. Changes focused primarily on improving reliability and include, a redesigned cocking handle, modified bolt, extractor and a redesigned hammer assembly that produces a slight delay in the hammer's operation in continuous fire mode, improving reliability and stability. There were equivalent LSW and carbine modifications. The British Ministry of Defence describes the L85A2 revision as modified in light of operational experience. The most reliable weapons of their type in the world. Army trials indicated extremely good reliability over a range of climates for various operational scenarios, though with a decline in reliability in hot, and especially hot and dry conditions. The L85A2 has achieved an average reliability rate of 25,200 mean rounds between failure, and the L86A2 achieved 12,897 mean rounds between failures. Both weapons have higher reliability rates in cold dry, temperate, and hot wet conditions, but lower rates in hot dry environments. The minimum expected life of A2 components is 10,000 rounds meaning they may never suffer stoppages during their lifetimes. The L85A1 was required to be able to fire 120 rounds over 24 hours, and the L86A1 was required to fire 800 rounds in 24 hours. The L85A2 is required to fire 150 rounds in 8 minutes 40 seconds, and the L86A2 is required to fire 960 rounds in 36 minutes. The first A2-style SA-80 weapons were rushed into action in Afghanistan in December 2001, and all 200,000 were converted by February 2006. 3,000 to 4,000 weapons were converted per month. Despite the modifications, reports started to emerge that the L-85A2 was still jamming. In reality, 
there were few jams and problems were much less serious than were made out to be. The modified A2 variants are distinguished by the HKA2 marking on the top of the weapon just forward of the butt plate, and the distinctive comma-shaped cocking handle. A Ford Picatinny accessories rail supplied by Daniel Defense was incorporated from 2008. The Magpul Industries polymer EMAG magazine was introduced from 2011 to replace the Heckler & Koch steel Stenag 4179 magazine. Continued testing of the L85A2 in adverse conditions demonstrates its reliability over contemporary rifles, including the M16. Although it is heavier than American rifles, its full-length barrel gives higher muzzle velocities and better terminal performance. Rounds from an M4 will only reliably fragment out to 50 a Euro 100 meters, while the L85A2 and M16 allowed fragmentation out to 150 a Euro 200 meters, and the L86A2 has an even longer fragmentation range. Despite these modifications, the L86A2 did not overcome efforts to replace it with a belt-fed machine gun. British troops were issued with L110A1 machine guns to add suppressive fire out to 300 meters. Despite these officially being supplementary weapons, they all but replaced the L86. Users, a Bolivia, used by special forces and the Bolivian National Police, a Jamaica, used since 1992. A United Kingdom, see also, British military rifles, modern equipment of the British Army, EMERK Burmese rifle based on the SA-80, Steer AUG Austrian Bullpup Assault Rifle. FAMAS French Bullpup Assault Rifle. Tava Israeli Bullpup Assault Rifle. Table of Handgun and Rifle Cartridges, References. Bibliography. External links, SA-80A2L85 Individual Weapon at Army Moduk. SA-80A2L85 Assault Rifle at Army-Technology.com